right, welcome back everybody. Now, in today's video, we want to dive deeper into the base images, okay? Now, we have learned in the previous video, all right, that when you want to start or when you want to build an image, you need to write a Docker file. And then we mentioned that your Docker file will contain what you call a base image, which is more like the operating system of that application that you intend to build, right? And we liken the base image to your operating system, that without the operating system, you will not be able to install any kind of application software on your you know, system at the end of the day. So we said that the base image gives your application the platform in order to run as you expect or as you intend. Now, when you go over to Docker Hub to look for a base image that you want to use to run your application, on the Docker Hub platform, there are, there are millions of base images, okay? updated every day, new ones are added every day, some are deprecated and all of that. Now, if you come here to this, you know, Docker Hub page, which is op.docker.com, and then let's say you were looking for a node base image. So just assume that you're building a Node.js application and you, of course you need a node base image to run that application. Now, if you look at it here, this node image has a tag, and that tag basically says that this is an official Docker image, all right, that you have here. Now, an official Docker image, if you look at it from the left side and you click on this icon, it says this image are curated, or right, a set of Docker open source and drop-in solution repositories, right? So these are official images that are curated by Docker. Okay, so they are the one building it, they are the one maintaining, all right, this particular image. So they are official images. Now, there are images that are also verified publishers, right? And if you click here, it says they are high quality images from publishers that are verified with Docker. Okay, so you can see the images, all right, verified images are images from Docker patents because these are people who have you know, maybe signed an agreement with Docker, they're in partnership with Docker to build images and Docker has verified that yes, these are our partners, and of course, their images can also all right, be trusted. Now, the one, the last one here is the sponsored OSS, which is an open source software, and the images are published and maintained by the open source project that are sponsored by Docker through the open source program, right? So Docker, they have this open source program that is sponsored. And of course, the, I mean, whatever image that emanates from such, you know, project can also be hosted on the Docker Hub or a platform. In addition to all of these that we have seen, the OSS, the verified publisher, the official images, you can also build Docker images and push it to your own Docker Hub repository. Now, if your images are public, it means that anybody can search those images on Docker Hub, and they can also pull those images and use them. All right. But from Docker, you have three trusted content. So there's the official image, there's the verified publisher, and there's the sponsored OSS. So those are the three that we can say are recognized by Docker. But like I said, you can also build an image, push it into your Docker Hub, and people can also fetch all right, such images. I mean, if you scroll down here, you are going to find, I mean, images that do not have any kind of tag, right? I mean, the ones that we're seeing here have some tags. But of course, if you dig further, all right, you're going to find images that do not have any tag whatsoever. Okay? But of course, I mean, you can use such images at your own risk. Now, if you click on this note, which is our focus today. Now, here, this note image has different tags, right? So there's the alpine, there's the bookworm, there's the bull eyes, or a bull's eye, there's the, you know, slim version. I mean, well, what does this mean? Okay, we have different tags. Uh, so which one can I use? Which one can I not use? What's the difference between the alpine? What's the difference between bookworm and bull's eyes? What's the difference between the slim version and all of that? Now, the purpose of Docker is to allow you to build your application in a lightweight manner. That's the that's that's like the you know the core of Docker, which means you can build your applications without having you know too much space, and your application is still able to run at least you know to an extent. Okay, 
And that is one of the core things that Docker, all right, you know, has been able to achieve, which is why it is different from virtual machines or virtualization. Okay. Now you have Alpine. There's Bookworm, there's Boo's Eyes, and of course, there's the Slim version. So what is the difference between this and when can I use Alpine? When can I use Bookworm? And when can I use Boo's Eyes? And when can I use the Slim version? Now, one thing I want to establish here is that these images are built, all right, from a Docker file. And of course, the reason why you have different types is so that you can have different options depending on the application that you're trying to build. Is that okay? Now, each application that you're developing, they all have their requirement. The application has a framework that you're leveraging. The framework requires certain dependencies, certain you know system programs, and all of that, right? So you need to factor that in. Now, the reason why you have a lot of tags is, like I said, is to give you variety, right? You have different options. Now, another thing also about the tags is that these tags provide you with images that are lighter than, all right, you know, one another. So, for example, the Alpine is like, you know, the most, you know, the lightest of the image that you can find on Docker Hub, okay, in terms of space now. So, which means if you're looking for an image that will not consume too much space, then you want to go with any Docker image that has the tag Alpine. Because the Alpine Linux distribution is known to be very light of it, which means it doesn't require too much space in order to run. Now, but the downside to that is that the Alpine does not contain some system programs that your application may require. Of course, you can install those dependencies, those applications, you can install them within your Docker file. You can write a Docker file that basically makes available all right, some of these programs. But by default, the Alpine does not come with certain system applications. So you want to know that before you go ahead and use the Alpine. Now, the bookworm, on the other hand, is built on top of the Debian distribution, which means some system programs will be available, all right, for your application to use. But the difference is that the bookworm is not as lightweight as the Alpine. Which means the bookworm, by the time you build your application using the bookworm base image, you might have an image that, I mean, that requires maybe like a gig or, you know, maybe less, okay, compared to the Alpine image. Now, the boost eyes is also the same as the bookworm, all right? But of course, the boost eyes, I mean, may also have maybe some other properties that makes it desirable, all right, than maybe bookworm or than Alpine. Is that okay? And then you have what you call the slim versions. So if you look at it here, you have the bookworm slim and you have the bull eye slim. Now, the bookworm slim, it's more like the lightweight version of the original bookworm, which means if you do not really need, you know, a lot of things, right? A lot of system programs. I mean, you don't want your image to be, you know, to, you don't want to over bloat the image, right? You just want something very simple. But perhaps you still need some system programs, maybe one or two, you can go with the bookworm slim and use that to run your image at the end of the day. All right? And the bull eye slim also falls into the same category. Now, what I want us to do, in order for all the things that I've said to make sense, is that I want us to take each of these tag and use it to run our node application that we have here. Now, this node application that we have here, we run it using the node 22 version. So what I want us to do is to build, all right, this same application using different tags that we can see here. So let's build with Alpine, let's build with Bookworm, let's build with Boost Eyes, and let's also take the Bookworm Slim and build with that as well. Let's take the Boost Eyes Slim and build with that as well, and let us compare the image size. Let's compare certain things, and um, I mean, to basically understand the difference between, all right, these tags that we have right here. So let's get right into it. So now I'm going to come here, and first of all, I'm going to change this to Alpine. All right, so I'm going to look for an Alpine version that I think it's um, okay. All right, so I'm going to go with Alpine. So which version should we go with? Um, so let's go with Node 23, I think Alpine, right? So I'm going to come in, I'm going to say Polom 23, I think Alpine, right? So I'm going with this one, 23, I think Alpine, right? So that's the Node version I'm going with. 
Okay, so I'm going to come here, Docker build, sorry, Docker build hyphen T. So the hyphen T, because I think somebody asked this in the comment section, the hyphen T basically is to give the image you are building an identity. That is what the tag basically is for, right? If I build my image, okay, from this file without a tag, it means that that image is going to have the tag not, which is not, all right, the best, you know, practice, okay? So when you're building a Docker image, you want to give your Docker image a tag as a form of identity. Now, when you give your Docker image a tag, it does two things for you. Number one, it is easier to run that image using the name that you've given it, all right? And of course, for the purpose of identification, it also makes a lot of sense because you might have multiple images from the same Docker file, right? But if you do not tag it, how do you differentiate that? Oh, this one is Alpine, this one is Bookworm. So when you tag your image like that, it gives you that idea that, oh, this image is this particular version, this one is this particular version. So you're able to differentiate, all right, between images from the same Docker file. Is that okay? So that is the, the reason why you must tag your images. Is that okay? So I'm going to come in, I'm going to call this node, I think, Alpine. Okay, so to identify that this particular image is built using the Alpine base image. Is that okay? And I'll put my dot here and I'm going to press enter. So it's going to connect to Docker Hub, pull that image and use that to build or write my image. So let's look at what we have here. So it says, hello world, blah, 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 fail to solve or right, metadata. All right, so that's more like um, a network um, issue right there. Okay, so let's do that again. All right. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what could be the problem. Okay, so let me grab this. Let's use this one. So Alpine 3.19, so let's use that one. Alpine. Alpine 3.19. So let's use this and let's see if this will work. Alpine 3.19. So let's try that and let's see. Okay. So that worked. So perhaps this particular version that we're using, maybe it's not available at the moment, but then we're using the Alpine all right, 3.19 and that worked all right for us. So that's good. Now let's check the image that we have built. Let's check the size. So Docker images. Now look at that. The, the base image that we use is what? Alpine 3.19. And look at the size, 158 MB. That is very lightweight, right? Very lightweight. Okay. Now, let's change the version to what? To bookwork. So let's try this bookwork. All right. So let's just change this to what? To bookwork. All right. So I'm using bookwork. And I'm not specifying any other time. So I'm going to call this node, I think, book one okay and then dot so that I, I can identify my image all right more easily so if i come here and say docker images i can see that all right i have my book book and look at the size of that 1.12 gig that is heavy okay now let's take a look at the bull's eyes all right the bull's eye so let's use bull high bull's eye sorry so let's say bulls eye, all right? And let's build again. So this is gonna be what? Bulls eye, and then dot. All right, so that's built. So Docker images, all right? Now look at the bulls eye. That one came to what? 1.03. So that means the bulls eyes is not as heavy as what? As the book one. That means there are certain things that the bookworm will contain that the bull's eye will not all right, contain. Are you understanding that now? Because if it is lighter than bookworm, it means that there are certain maybe system programs that does not come with the bull's eye. All right. I mean, that is why it is lightweight. Okay. So which means the bookworm version comes with a lot of system programs. All right. Some that we might not need. Okay. At all. All right, so let's try the slim versions. So here I can see bull eye slim. So let's try that. 
iPhone Slim. Okay, and then let's build that again. So I'm going to call this iPhone Slim just to basically identify it and then build again. Okay, now if I do Docker images, now look at the Slim version. The Slim version came to what? 230 MB. That is, I mean, pretty lightweight. Okay, all right. Now the bookworm, let's see if we can find the bookworm slim. Okay, so let's see, can we find any bookworm slim here? Uh, okay, so we have the this one, 23.10, and then we have this one, right? So let's try, um, let's try this one, uh, 23.1, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work, or this 23.1 sometimes do not work as we expect, okay? All right, but let's try. So 23 point, okay. So let me change this. 23 point what? That's point one, point zero. All right, I think book one. Uh, is that okay? Yes, so I think sling. All right, so that's the sling version. So let's see if this will work. So we're gonna say book one, I think sling. All right, so let's try that. Okay, so that builds, so Docker. All right, images. Now look at the bookworm slim. The bookworm slim is what? 224 MB. It is even lighter than the bull's eye slim. Is that okay? Now, the question and I know is on your mind is, so, Will our application run with these different versions that we have? I mean, let's give it a try. All right, let's try if the application is going to run with these different images. Because sometimes, like I said, I mean, we are running a very simple application, okay? So it is possible that these, okay, images that were built will work. I mean, with the application, because, I mean, it's very simple. We don't have any, you know, any strict dependencies. We don't have any, you know, kind of strict requirement in order for the application to run here. All right. I mean, these are just this is just a simple application. So it is possible that we run these things, and then of course it works, okay, without any kind of issues. But in a normal work environment, you want to go with the image that at, that supports your dependencies, your frameworks, and it is stable. Because in a production environment, stability is important. Okay. So you're not just going to go with a version because I mean the version has a lot of system programs. No, you want to go with a version that works with your application and gives your application optimal performance. That is what you want to go with at the end of the day. So in a work environment, you have, you know, um, you, you have to test these different versions. All right, you have to test these different versions and then at the end of the day, you come up and say, oh, after our extensive test, we believe that this version, which whether it is Bookworm, whether it is Boost High, whether it is, you know, the Alpine, this version gives us the optimal performance. Because like I said, in a work environment, the optimal performance is what you are concerned about, not just the fact that something is light or something is heavy. All right, optimal performance is what you're after at the end of the day. Okay, so let's run maybe one or two of these applications and let's see all these images and let's see, all right, if it works. So I'm going to do Docker, run, iPhone D to run in a detached mode, iPhone P, our application runs on port 8080, so I'm going to do 3000, column 8080, all right, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this note, I think I'll, all right, um, that should be Alpine, right? All right, and then, so the name of the image I want to run is this one. So the name of the image is known, I think Alpine, all right, and then I'm going to say, okay, note I think Alpine, column latest, all right? And then I'm going, to, I'm going to run it. So if I do Docker PS, I can see the container. I mean, the container is running, right? So now let's do Docker run again. I think D, I think P, so 3001, 8080, the same port. Like I told us in the last video, I mean, you can actually use the same container port for all your all right, images. I mean, it, there's no, you know, um, strict rule regarding that. Okay. So 3001, 8080. So let's call this one. So the name of this one. Is going to be node. All right. Um, so let's call this node book one. All right. And then the image name is node I think book one. 
okay uh so long latest right and then let's run that so docker run sorry docker ps so the two containers have started and of course it looks like it's running so the last one is docker run let's run just one more i think d i think p so 3002 80, 80. I mean, you, you understand why I'm incrementing my port number? Because I can't use the same host port for everything, right? But of course, you can use the same container port for all the images, right? So the name of this one, so let's call this one node. All right, let's call this booze. Booze I, all right, I feel slim. Okay, and the name of the image is, all right, booze I, I feel slim. Okay, so long latest. Okay, so now if I do Docker PS, I can see that all the containers are actually all right running. So I can come here to my local host and say 3000, my application is working. So I can copy this, all right? So I can copy this, okay? And say 3001, my application is working. All right, copy this again. All right, and say 3002, my application is working. Now, you can see that one of the things that we have found out is that the images, all right, they come in, you know, different tags, and the tags basically determines the size. So from what we can see here, we can see that this, I mean, it's different sizes depending on what you want to do. Like I said, at the end of the day, in a production environment, you will go with stability over whether it is lightweight or whether it is Okay, heavy. all right. So, I mean, stability is what you want to go with. But in most cases, actually, you want to go with the one that has, I mean, the, the least amount of system programs or applications running. Okay, because that way you can actually just install the things that you need. Okay, for example, if you go with Alpine, Alpine gives you just 158 MB, right? So with the Alpine version, there's a room, all right? You know, you can, I mean, it's flexible. Okay, you can actually install the things that you feel you need without having to, you know, use the ones that are heavier and then it contains a lot of system programs that you wouldn't need, all right, at the end of the day because that will even increase the attack surface. Okay, but like I said, at the end of the day, you want to go with stability. So you have to examine or you have to analyze the images and then settle with the one that gives you optimal performance and, of course, you, the attack surface is greatly reduced at the end of the day. Okay. So that is one of the things that I thought to share with us today in this video to basically help you understand, I mean, the different tags that you have there, when you can use which one, and of course, you know, what you should look out for when selecting or write an image, okay, uh, a base image, actually. Is that okay? All right. So thank you so much. All right. But before we go, let me just show us how you can, all right, stop all of this container at once without having to stop them one after the other. Okay. So here I will do Docker stop. Right, and then I will do dollar sign and then open a bracket and say Docker PS, which is to display the running containers. And I'll say I think AQ, AQ is AQ there is a tag to basically say I want to secure these things all right in a quiet mode and I want it to just display for me the containers, the container ID, nothing more. Okay, and then I'll put it here. So, what this will do is that it is going to display all the running containers and the Docker stop is going to stop all of the running all right containers. That is exactly what we want to achieve with this. So I press enter and let's see what happens. All right. So if you look at what we have here, the three, all right, the four containers, all right, have been stopped actually, right? So, I mean, if you look at the ID, the 7A stopped, the 8B stopped as well, the F2 also stopped. Perhaps we have, maybe we have another container running somewhere, okay? And that one has also been stopped. So now if I do Docker PS, all right, I can't see any container, all right, again, I mean, it's all being stopped right now. So thank you so much.